We are standing in the entrance area of the Oak Room. So we're in a trial assembly phase now. Charles Taylor and his team have basically assembled all of these bits of panelling. There's over 600 bits of panelling and they've created a temporary structure to just understand what the room is. I've never done a job like this before. <laughs> I can see. Yeah. yeah. That's an understatement, really. Yeah. <laughs> The Oak Room is one of a number of tea rooms that Charles Rennie McIntosh designed for Miss Catherine Cranston, who was a tea room entrepreneur in Glasgow at the beginning of the 20th century. It's the largest of the tea rooms that was within a whole complex at Ingram Street, which was one of four tea room complexes that Miss Cranston owned in the city. The building that this tea room was in changed its use in the 1970s. And there was essentially a very, very rapid but very comprehensive salvage job. And it then became part of Glasgow Museum's collections. But rooms like this, as many of us who work with architectural fragments know, are not easy to reconstruct in museum buildings because they take up a lot of space. And so there had never really been an opportunity to reconstruct the Oak Room until conversations started around the idea of the new v and in Dundee. This is the coding that was applied to all the individual pieces of panelling when the room was dismantled in 1971. Each room was allocated a number, so the Oak Room is number 10, north, south, east and west, so N, S, E and W, upper and lower, and then sequential numbering left to right across each level. This coding is the fundamental start being able to piece it all back together again. The Oak Room has an enormous integrity. There was a, some scepticism about the parts that arrived and were loaded up onto our top floor. Uh, but actually, very quickly, you know, we just got more and more interested as, as we could see the, the trial hang emerge. I had confidence in the material because the Oak Room's made of very durable oak. The big concern was trying to work out where it all would go. Yes, it was coded but no sort of single bit of information was ever definitive. It's been painted that many times that we've got a good idea of where they go back to with the old paint lines. So here we've got a nice big paint line along here. It tells us how much this was overlapping. Without that, we wouldn't know exactly where these boards went because everyone's different. This is actually nothing like the original. It's a lot lighter, whereas this is, this is the raw wood. So this would have been stained, stained dark, and then it would have had a polish on top of that. Um, so this is actually just painted on. This is a piece of the original glass. It's been painted over so we can't see the real colouring of it, but this one has been marked as blue and here, and we've got another one which is purple. So these ones would have been transparent because these were window facing. So we will be looking at getting the paint removed so you can get a proper effect of it once it's finally installed. We know from Macintosh's records and account books and so on, that he worked with a number of different specialist makers, craftsmen, companies, who were producing all the different elements that he then worked into his designs. With the conservation, the same thing essentially has to happen. Because, of course, you have to bring together what you have that survives from the room, and then look at how to conserve all of those surviving elements, reconstruct it, and then work out what to do about the bits that are missing. The aluminium gallery structure is vital because it's just inappropriate to face fix or screw fix into the oak room artifact in any way. And so what's needed is a structure which would be used to mount the oak room artifact on and also to inform the scale of the structure that had to be built up in uh, Dundee. Our business has been about dealing with and addressing and distracting dilapidations. So that's things that would pull the eye away from that key Macintosh vision. The oak, we have sourced and created a finish using chemical analysis of the few remaining parts. So the color's right, the glass will be right, the original light fittings are there, replicas will be made where they've been lost. All these different parts will all be meticulously considered and recreated. 
It's a fairly major undertaking and it has been a real collaboration. It had to be. It's been Dundee and Glasgow working very closely together and then of course a lot of expertise that has been curatorial expertise, conservation expertise and the people who have been working on the room for the last two years or so to create it as we see it today. It's been a real collaborative effort. The thing about Macintosh that I think is evident in the Oak Room is that what he's doing is creating a piece of total design because he orchestrates absolutely every single element. It's the rhythm of the way that the panelling works on the walls, it's the punctuations of colour and the different kinds of lighting effects that he uses. And I think one of the things that we realised very, very early on when we were thinking about how to represent Macintosh within the Scottish Design Galleries is that that concept of total design is what is absolutely crucial to understanding him and understanding his whole design aesthetic, his whole process of thinking about it, his whole intention. That gave us the opportunity to really immerse visitors in the aesthetic world, the design world of Macintosh, by taking them into one of his interiors. Mm -hmm.